It looks like it crash landed. This contemporary building in the middle of a Victorian neighborhood. 36 years ago, this site was occupied by the Japan Pavilion, part of the 1982 World's Fair. In a weird instance of irony and foreshadowing, the most popular attraction at the Japan Pavilion was an amazing painting robot. It was an abstract expressionist, clearly influenced by Franz Klein. On a clear sunny day, the exterior gleams, white and luminescent. But look up close. There's another color to it. Run your hand over it. It's pink Tennessee marble, dug up from quarries just down the road. This unique stone is what earned the city its moniker as the Marble City. It's a signature stone from this region, part of our heritage. But it's found in buildings all over the world, like the U.S. Capitol and the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. It's even in Grand Central Station. It took 460 million years and countless tiny marine creatures to create the marble. Fossilized remains, brush strokes on a canvas made of stone, dug from the earth. Go ahead, walk on in, it's free. It's hushed in here, reverent, like church or a library. So contemplative. Everything just naturally slows down a little. It's an easy place to think. Probably even lowers your blood pressure. In an upstairs gallery, you can check out Higher Ground, an exhibit that traces 160 years of visual art in East Tennessee. Keep an eye out for the works of Buford Delaney. He was an African-American artist born in Knoxville who left in the mid-1920s to pursue his art in cities where a person of color could realize his own vision. He died in Paris in 1979. Downstairs is the Great Hall. There you can experience the cycle of life, a seven-part narrative of power and the wonder of infinity by renowned glass artist Richard Jolly. It's nearly eight tons of glass and metal fashioned into a visual allegory. Or is it a parable? The view from the Great Hall almost becomes part of the exhibit. To the right is the sun sphere, the giant reflective globe that was mistaken for a wig shop in an episode of The Simpsons. And the Tennessee Amphitheater which later served as a design model for the roof of the Denver International Airport. At the other end, there's the festival lawn, a court of flags, and a blue million water jets to keep kids and dogs cool on summer days. It's also a great place to have lunch. All of this, everything, it's a cycle of life. And it's okay that the painting robot is long gone.